Welcome to the Sage in Tech daily demo. I'm Ian Lang with Sage, and today I'm going to share with you some of the things that make Sage in Tech the preferred provider of the ARCPA. Before getting to the main content, I'd like to go over a couple of housekeeping items. I'll then dive into how you can get immediate visibility, organizational insight, financial control, as well as how you can document decisions in the context of your financial records. During the presentation, please feel free to type any questions into the Q&A box, and I'll try to get to those questions during the course of the webinar. If I don't, however, I'll certainly follow up with you afterwards. You'll also receive a link to the recorded webinar as a follow-up to this event. Also, please take a few minutes to fill out the survey, as we use these survey results to improve future webinars. Now let's jump into looking at how Sage Intech can provide immediate visibility. And when I talk about immediate visibility, what I'm getting at is how you can get information about your entire organization right away. On the screen right now is an image of a dashboard, and I'm going to jump into the system and show you this actual dashboard to walk you through some of the ways it gives us immediate visibility. In this demo environment, we have a multi-entity company. This company is modeled after a global services organization with seven entities, but it could be any kind of company like distribution, software, not-for-profit, healthcare, and so the list goes on. Let me point out some of the general items on the screen. First of all, I have seven entities, and this shows in some of the reporting that goes in from the different locations. By going to this button that says the top level, I'm at the top level right now, I could drop into any of these companies from here. What you're seeing right now, however, is a view from the top level, a consolidated view of all my financials across these entities. This particular dashboard that I'm looking at is for a CFO, and having a look at high level information, I can, I've created a number of key performance indicators or performance cards, charts and graphs. Having a look at something like total revenue, revenue for services, this being a services environment, that makes sense to me. Direct labor costs, operating expenses, net income. Having a look at my operating margin, I can immediately see that it's come down, most likely due to the fact that labor costs have significantly increased, while my profit margin still managed to increase my bottom line, and that was probably due to the fact that I saw a big saving on my operating expenses. Each of these performance cards really are showing us a summation of account group. For example, in the case of assets, I've taken all the assets accounts and created a summary of these accounts for the current month. Underneath the summary, I can see a comparison of, to the prior month, giving me a performance trend at a glance. And in this case, I can see assets has moved up. Having a look at those charts and graphs, uh, using the example of the direct, the direct versus indirect labor trend, I'm getting a six month view of that comparison over a six month period. So I can ask any or see any kind of movements that spark my interest and I can drill down and ask the question as to what's happened there. Now I'll show you how to navigate to each of these entities. What I've just done now is I've now dropped into the Johannesburg entity. And what the system will now do is open up a new tab with the same dashboard and with the same performance cards, only now that we are looking at the performance metrics for Johannesburg. Had I dropped into Sydney, it would have done the same thing, but now showing it to me in operational currency of that particular country being Australian dollars. So something very unique with Sage Intact is you can have multiple companies running in multiple currencies, which is quite unique. I have a question that's just come in and it asks, can you limit users to work within those particular entities? And that's a good question. To answer that question, I'll go ahead into my users and actually go through and see what permissions we can set up per user. Firstly, I have the user information, where I set his user type, uh, his name, his email address, and that we use for sending um, um, alerts, requisitions, approvals, collaboration feed, you name it, will come go to that address should you want to subscribe to it. Looking at roles, you can have a quick view of what kind of permission offer it has to this particular system. I see a list of all my modules, and should I want to see the permissions related to that module, I can drill down further, see a long granular list of all the permissions relating to that particular module. For example, under journal entries, I can choose to edit and delete, I remove those permissions so Alfred can't do that. <coughs> or should I not want Alfred to be able to prove a journal entry, I can take that permission away from there. To answer your question, how to limit to a user, uh, to an entity, I can decide to say, Alfred, I only want you to work in Johannesburg, and Sydney. So when he logs in, those are the only two entities you'll see on his drop down. I can go one step further, and we have this concept of dimensions, which I'll come back to just now. I could limit to him, limit him to a particular department. Let's say I only wanted Alfred to transact in the sales department because he's a salesperson. I could force that from here. Now let's move forward in our agenda. 
and walk you through organizational insights and how Sage Intech can help you get deeper insights into your organization to make key decisions that drive success. As I've showed you, I'm working from the top level and I have seven entities. Now I can break down and filter that information to take a deeper dive into those financials. Again, I'm working from the top level. I'm able to look across all my companies, across all entities within a company and analyze information for those entities. Moving over to my Dimensional Insights dashboard. Yeah, with assets, I'm gonna go back to assets. You'll notice it turns blue when I roll over it. Again, it's a summary of accounts. When I click on it, you'll see it will drill down into that and give me a list of all my assets in this environment. I can choose to drill down further. Let's say I wanna look at what my checking account is looking like. I can see it brings me down to a list of what breaks down that value and I can drill down further to get me to the source of information and I can see here it is a journal entry uh, which is linking a department, a location, an account, a debit and a credit and its currency linked to it and I can see whether there's any issues I have with that particular environment or journal entry. These charts are not limited however to a library of pre-built reports. Using the built-in reporting tools, you can either edit, create your own financial reports that slice and dice information from the general ledger. You can also create your own transactional reports. And I'll move over to um, the Sage Interactive Custom Report Writer, which can help us view transactional data in a live basis. So for example, if I wanted to just look at this, you need some time to refresh, but as you can see, I can move columns around. I can add additional columns and fields by going to my, my field list. Let's say I wanted to bring in some information around contracts, the class, and I'll refer to classes later on. Um, let's see, account number, all your fields you can bring in and choose what you want to do with those in this particular report. So ask the particular questions around this. What you can also do is you can create trends and pivot tables without having to make the trip to Excel. In addition to drill down and expansion, we have this concept of dimensions. Using this example of a, a revenue trend by dimensions report, I'm able to look at revenue from five different perspectives. So whether I want to know how much money my different entities are bringing to the table from my different service lines, my different industries, my different items and my project managers, I'm able to see that different revenue line from five different perspectives. Ultimately, you would have to have an Excel spreadsheet with, let's say, five spreadsheets open or workbooks open, sheets open, for me to go into each of those tabs. And if I wanted to drill down further, I could do that from this particular dashboard. I can also have a view of, let's say, a basic profit and loss summary. And yeah, I'm busy looking at my income, my net income from a class perspective, showing my different revenue lines. In this case, farm installation, broadband income and sale of goods. What if I want to see that from a different perspective and see what my income and expenses are by department? I'm going to go ahead and drill down into my report writer and show you how that works. Firstly, you have your rows that you would select. And again, we're using account groups. I have an account group from net income that's made up of many other account groups to come to this value and allow me to report easily. Coming over to the columns tab, I can now select what I want to see in my columns. So just to edit that actuals column and change it quickly without spending too much time, I can go and change that to a department's dimension so when I rerun that report from my dashboard, it will now show me this profit and loss summary from a different perspective, looking at it from a department's perspective. And so now we can see most of my revenues coming from services, but I've got a number of expenses coming from behind or below the line there. I have a question that's just come in and asks, how many dimensions can you have with Sage Intact? And the short answer is as many as you need. The longer answer requires a little bit of explanation. Some of these, Sage Intact has a number of predefined dimensions. Some of these dimensions are associated with a particular module, such as projects and task. We have a projects module where you can do timesheets and billing and milestone billing. It's a whole talk for another day, but there's a projects module that you can use from a dimensions perspective. You also have the infantry control module. And if you have that, you'll have the warehouse dimension. If you have contracts, you'll have the contracts dimension. Other predefined dimensions are locations, departments, customers, suppliers, items, employees, and class. Class is generally named, renamed to fit the business needs in your specific environment. In addition to predefined dimensions, Sage Intact has the ability to add user-defined dimensions. So if you have an element that drives your business, you can define it as a custom dimension and then tag transactions to that particular dimension. 
For example, if you're a printing company, you could track revenue and expenses by your different presses to determine the value that each press is bringing to your business and whether it's worth keeping it or not. Nonprofit organizations often use, use it to find dimensions to track grants and funds. Ultimately, you become highly expandable as far as filtering on different metrics that matter to you and your business. In addition to dimensions, another way we can break down information is around statistical accounts. A statistical account keeps track of non-financial non -financial information like headcount or floor space. Looking at this example here, yeah, on my first dashboard that I showed you, I had revenue per employee. So in this case, I took my revenue for services and divided by the number of employees that I have working in my services department to give me an idea of how much it's costing me to, how much money each of these employees are bringing to the table. Another example that I have is a different environment in an organization that has a lot of recurring income. So yeah, I'm able to look at a, a committed monthly recurring value per customer. I can look at what my customer renewal rate is. I can see how many new customers are onboarded for the month, giving me a revenue churn. And I can have a bit of detail as to how many customers I'm bringing on a monthly basis. So ultimately, if I had to bring 10 customers per month, I would see that effect. I could easily determine how much money I could expect from that and ask the question and get to the answer. Another example I could look at is a non-profit organization that I have here. And what, what's important to them? They may want to look at the number of donors they have and the number of the major donors they have. By having this information, I'm able to calculate how much it costs for me to um, raise, uh, to cost me to onboard a new donor. How much money those donors, how much I'm receiving from those donors, how many times a year they, they, they donate and what the average gift amount is using non-financial information like a statistical account. So ultimately we can capture operational information right inside the system without having to move into an external spreadsheet. Other examples you could use, just to name a few, could be revenue per square meter, cost per machine hour, as an example. I have another question that's just come in, and it asks, can companies with different charts of accounts, like companies in countries with strict charts of accounts and guidelines? So far, what I've shown you is a company where entities have a shared chart of accounts. Let me go back there. If you have a company that's more global or you have a company with different charts of accounts for one other, another reason, maybe it's for a government requirement or maybe you have inherited a chart of accounts, you could still consolidate using the Sage Intact Global Consolidation Tool. I'll move to that module. In this module that I've just rolled down into, it gives me an overview of my organization, showing me my seven entities and the different currencies that they are operating into. If I wanted to show you how we create a consolidated book, because we may want to consolidate a certain bunch of entities for different purposes. For example, I may only want to report or consolidate my North American companies or all my non-American companies. And ultimately, I could create a global consolidation with all my entities. Let's use my global consolidation where I've actually decided to consolidate all my entities into ZOR. I can edit that, it gives me some book information, what, how we consolidate uh, your income statement versus balance sheet, your exchange rate gains and loss on those exchange rate differences on, on consolidation, the different entities I choose to consolidate. Let's say I wanted to remove Sydney from this consolidation. It would be a simple process of doing that. I can choose which different dimensions I want to involve in that consolidation include. And ultimately, for some reasons, you may not want items and customers because maybe this is just for financial reporting. I don't need all these dimension all this dimension information consolidated. However, you have the choice to do so. And effectively, we create a new book and you can run reports from that particular book. We can have a look at the different eliminations accounts. Um, so ultimately, at the end of the day, when it comes to running consolidation, once you've created your book, it's a matter of just coming in to the process of consolidate, choose the book you want to consolidate, choose the month you want to consolidate for, and click on consolidate. I could have choose to consolidate on an hourly or a daily or a weekly basis if I, if I so choose. What, what you see here is all my exchange rate values have been fetched for me and automatically populated. And that's coming from an external source called OANDA, which is a globally renowned and trusted source. So you never really have to input your exchange rates when doing a consolidation. However, you have the ability to edit should you require. So what I've shown you now by consolidating this book right now, this is typically a task that can take accounting team more than a day to do and an expensive resources allocated to such a task or project. If you plan for expansion and growth, we can also have a look at how we can budget in Sage Intact. 
before I move on there, I actually want to sorry, show you an outcome of these reports that we can run, such as a consolidated balance sheet. So going into my dashboard, a consolidated dashboards, I'm just showing you a few of my reports. Um, I'm able to show you a balance sheet global for all my entities, as you can see going across. I also brought in a report for my, 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 my ZR book. And yeah, I'm showing all my, 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 my companies uh, consolidating into RANDs and giving me an exchange rate that was used at that particular time. I could choose to uh, filter this report for a different time period. But ultimately, you're able to create as many different types of reports as you like using that particular consolidation book um, to, to filter by or run reports from. Going back to my budgets and how you plan for, for growth going forward, we can have a look at how we create budgets. What's really nice is we typically find that users generally want to update and export their budgets, moving it in and out of Excel, for example. But let's run a budget report and show you how that works. I'll go to a period where I know I've got financial information. I can choose the different dimensions. And in this case, I want to specifically just run a budget report for Johannesburg. I could go further and select those different classes that I have. But I'm going to run it for all that in that particular environment. What I'm also able to do is export this directly into a CSV file into the same format I could bring it back in. So it makes it very simple because now all you would have to do is change a value for a known import format. Let's view that report and see what my budget is. And yeah, you can see it's going to give me a list of my accounts, my departments. These are my different dimensions that I have. So should I want to create budgets for each of these different dimensions, I could do so. So for example, my account 4100 is my sales account. My department 500 is my sales department. And my location is Johannesburg number 700. I'm giving it a value here. So if I wanted to change this, I could either edit it or I could export it to Excel, change the value on our Excel spreadsheet and bring it directly back. If I wanted to allocate budgets to projects or classes such as my different revenue streams, it would be easy matter, matter of just including that into this report. So into my Excel CSV file and import and do it from that perspective. One way of bringing information from a budget perspective. Once I populate my budgets, I can drop those into any of my reports that exist in, in intact. As I move forward in today's agenda, I hope you're getting a sense of how Sage Intact can help you get to those key decision metrics that drives your organization and drives it across different entities. In the next section on financial control, I'm going to show you how Sage Intact can help you maintain financial control in your organization. I'm going to walk you through order entry and purchasing to demonstrate the different workflows and processes that are in place to keep your, keep your business in control. I'm going to move over to this particular tab where I've logged in as Emma and I've already opened it up as Johannesburg. I'm having an overview of this particular module being order entry. I can see what, what's specific to that module being customers, warehouses, product lines, items and prices. And what's the workflow around that? Generally start with a quote, move to an order and ultimately it turns into an invoice. And my different reports that I run from this for this particular module. I can also access it from my drop down list view and I can access the system from that perspective as well. Let's have a view of an existing transaction. And let's say APSA has decided to call me and they are querying about sales order number two. I can drill down and view that uh, to see the history of that transaction, transaction date, the due date, the item total, what the transaction status is some header information regarding that particular customer, what items was purchased. Also, I can have a look at my history and I can see it started with the quote, moved into an order, it was eventually shipped and ultimately a sales invoice was created. I could, could drill down into those transaction types or documents and see what information regarding that. I can go have a look at the payment details and see that this particular order has not been paid for yet, for example. Moving over to purchasing, I moved over to an environment where I have Chelsea and Chelsea has limited access to the system, using her as an example of how we can create a purchase requisition and how that can be approved. So I'm allowing her to create and let's use a supplier and then an item. Let's say we want to buy some training material. I can then view the, what I want to show you is that you can now expand this particular line item, I could link other fields to it, such as department or class, perhaps I'm buying something for a different project. And what you'll notice is as soon as I do that, it will predefine and pre-select some of these uh, dimensions on this. What I can also do is have a view of my available quantities. 
But what you'll notice is when I try it from, the Chelsea, from Chelsea's perspective, she does not have access to that particular feature. And we've disallowed her to see stock quantities. We could also disallow users to see costs. It gets very granular as to what you want to limit your users to. But we'll allow her to process this. And then we'll have my controller approve that particular transaction for her. Going back to Emma, who has the permission to do so, I want to go ahead and approve that particular transaction. And yeah, we can see that particular purchase requisition that Emma has just created. All I need to now do is click approve. I could view that transaction if I wanted to. I'm just going to go ahead and approve it. And now when I go back to my list of transactions, purchase requisitions for Chelsea, she now has the ability to convert this purchase requisition. Before you can see with this example, that, that purchase requisition has not been approved. She would be notified of it if she required, if she's subscribed to that. She can now convert this into a purchase order. She can now post it. So now I have a purchase order, a committed order. And should you have the spend management module, uh, spend insight module, uh, it would validate against the budget, just to name that. Now I want to receive this particular stock items. I can post that. And finally, I want to invoice this particular transaction and post. I need a vendor invoice number, a supply invoice number, and I can post that. Should I want to view that transaction and see the process of it quickly, I can go look at my history and you can see Chelsea created this particular transaction. We can see some information around the approvals on it should I want. And I can see that it was Emma that approved that particular transaction. What we also have, just to show you, is how we can set up different permissions and workflow. So I'm going to move over to my firstly how I set up my workflow. In this case, I started with purchase requisition. It then moved to either a purchase order. And then if you have stock, you're going to receive that stock and then create finally a vendor invoice thereafter. Should I want, I could always go ahead and add another step in here and change my business process. For example, let's say I had lot tra tracking items and I want to first do a quality control test on that item that I've received before I invoice the supplier. I could do that. Looking at the approval policies that I can attach to any of those particular transaction types, what I've done for purchase requisitions, I can show you how that one worked and why it was Emma that approved it. We can see I set up a rule type that she will approve all purchase requisitions in this environment. But should you want, you could go ahead and change that on a value, based on a value perspective, a department head approval perspective, or employee management perspective, and add as many steps in here as I'd like. Now that you're getting a better idea of how of understanding controls, let's move ahead into the next section. In this section, I'm going to talk about documents and decisions and how Sage Intact is all about documenting them in the context of the financial records. This isn't just about keeping notes in a meeting. We keep track of conversations in the way it can be easily found and looked at later. Let me move back. Coming back to my Dimensional Insights dashboard, we can see uh, I had a bit of collaboration that was happening here. That's uh, questions that have been posed to me from other teams or members on my team. Chelsea posed a question that says, we seem to be losing momentum in selling to the insurance industries while having an increase in healthcare. Can you investigate to speak to marketing if they've lost focus on insurance? Emma went and answered and said, you're quite right. After speaking to Dora from, advertising, from our advertising agency, there appears to have been a miscommunication with regards to our ongoing spend on um, marketing in this particular industry. Having a look at what she's referring to, we can see a significant decline in insurance. And interestingly, we saw a significant increase in healthcare. You are making sense of this information in this dashboard and asking the question, at least we find out that it was our advertising agency that we need to speak to regarding that. Using this different environment that I have here, I've set up a number of questions that teams on my uh, members on my team have posed to me. Like, I have a question about an invoice. Please confirm the invoice. We may need to raise a credit as it seems the project team did not get signed off. I could drill down into that invoice from here and answer the question and see what they are talking about. I'll use this example of a general ledger, a journal batch that I processed, and Mark Nagel has a question uh, posing to me about that. And what he's asked me is that he is saying, oh, I've got to load. He's saying, team, looking at our latest list of open items for the month end, you can tell me what this adjustment is for. 
Yen Lang, that's me. I went ahead and said, I created a sports schedule that shows my calculation analysis for this, for this entry, GC attached. What's nice about this is I can attach an Excel document with the actual calculation therein. And so someone who wants to come back to this journal entry later on, could be an auditor, could be someone querying it, could come back and actually see that particular transaction. It exists and is always attached to this particular journal entry. Mark goes ahead and says, thanks for the backup, entry approved. Before I end the presentation, I wanted to quickly just talk about banking integration and how we work with our bank accounts. As part of Sage Intech's um, localization to the South Africa market was to integrate into the major banks. And so far we have these five banks. As time goes on, we'll look to integrate into other bank accounts that come on, come on board. Having a quick look at how we can do a bank reconciliation, I can quickly show you an existing recon that I've initiated in the past. And we can see how we can match transactions to automatically create a bank account. So ultimately I have my transactions from the bank. I can select whether I want to match a transaction or not. And in this case, I need to find 500 Rand and I can see this transaction calls that and I've now matched that. I can move on to the next transaction and continue to do my bank recon from there. Please note that you can set up matching principles as well. So if I set up a, a matching principle based on amount and invoice document, it would auto, auto match for you. So I wouldn't have to do this manually. Now I'm going to go back into our agenda and summarize what we've gone through today. We looked at how Sage Intech can consolidate information across your organizations and how dashboards help you visualize that information in a more immediate way. We drilled down to get detailed information inside the system to make the better decisions. I demonstrated how you can collaborate within your organization. You can also take all the data you're getting and work together to come up with different solutions. I also showed you how you can make decisions about what you're going to do next and then document those decisions in the context of your organization. Our discussion wouldn't be, be complete today without some mention of best in class and what that means. Best in class is defined by Gartner as a superior product within a category within the category of hardware or software. With best in class, you have the flexibility to choose the best product in your company. You just pay for what you need while you keep the existing tools and systems that work well for your organization. And then you integrate the system and create the right technology stack to exactly support your business needs. As best in class financial management solution, Sage Intact allows you to build a unique solution that best fits your organization. We focus on delivering the best financial management solution for your finance professionals. Our approach here is to be the best financial management solution that allows you to integrate with the best available solutions and you, for you to use today and whatever your needs are in future. In fact, many of our customers have integrated within one or more third-party best-in-class solutions. Our system is the only one preferred by the ARCPL, the organization that wrote the book on accounting. Every US-based US -based company follows their standards and they have over 400,000 members who have seen every accounting system out there and ours is the only one that they prefer. No other software company can say this. We are rated number one in terms of customer satisfaction by the G2 crowd, and we've actually been number one, number one customer satisfaction since 2015, based on over 2,000 reviews from our customers. Our high satisfaction score comes from the way our product meets the current business requirement in product direction, and the way we have focused up on finance features for finance people every quarter when we, are do, when we do a new release. More users are likely to recommend our products versus any other vendor. In the Gartner Critical Capabilities Report, Sage Intact receives the highest score in core financials for lower mid-size enterprises. This is for organizations for, with annual revenue over 50 million US dollars that have the headquarters in the US. It looks like we're getting close to the end and we're running out of time. So I'm not gonna answer any questions right now, but please do post any in the chat box and I'll definitely answer you back to you via email. Also, if you're looking for addi additional information about Sage Intact, please have a look at the different links in this particular doc um, for you right now. We have LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, please contact us directly or visit our website. There's also a contact us now or a chat box. You can speak to us there. I'll leave a message in the chat box and we'll certainly contact them, get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you for joining us. Please fill out the survey at the end of the webinar. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.